Good morning. We're going to continue with our study of quadrilaterals. I've placed all of the quadrilaterals from our last lesson where we just named the quadrilaterals and sort of talked about some of their characteristics. I've placed them all inside of this pink circle. So everything inside of this pink circle is a quadrilateral. If I placed a triangle, it should not go inside the, the circle. Why? Because it doesn't have four sides. A triangle has three sides. So I would put the triangle outside of the circle. I could take another shape, like a pentagon, which has five sides, and the pentagon would not go inside the circle. <laughs> In fact, the circle wouldn't go inside the circle. So we could think of all different kinds of shapes that would not belong in the circle because they do not have four sides. So everything in this circle is a parallel, I'm sorry, is a quadrilateral because it has four sides. Now I'm going to start to differentiate between the quadrilaterals by laying down more circles. So now everything inside of this circle that I just laid down is a quadrilateral. Everything in here is still a quadrilateral. Everything here is still a quadrilateral. But this is outside of the circle. If you remember, this is called our common quadrilateral or our trapezium. And I'm just going to refer to this for the rest of this lesson as a trapezium, okay? So our trapezium is not in this circle. Our trapezium has four sides. So everything inside of this big circle is definitely a quadrilateral. Everything inside of this circle could also be a trapezium because it has four sides. However, there's something else going on in here. So I'm going to just fix that and I'm going to put down another piece of yarn and I'm going to exclude the trapezoid. There we go. Trapezoid is no longer in the circle. What do we know about the trapezoid? It has at least one set of parallel sides. The red and black sticks from the stick box are the sides that are parallel to each other. In other words, parallel meaning they will never meet. We could extend these two lines forever and they would never meet. And I should go back and say these two line segments and they would never meet because they're parallel. But look at everything inside of here. This has one set of parallel sides, but everything inside of here has two sets of parallel sides. Everything in here, parallelogram, rhombus, square, rectangle, they could all be considered parallelograms because the parallelogram has two sets of parallel sides. So everything in here is a parallelogram because it's two sets of parallel sides. Everything in here is a trapezoid because everything in here has at least one set of parallel sides. However, this cannot be a parallelogram. Why? Because a parallelogram has to have two sets of parallel sides. Here's one set, here's the other set. Let's lay down another piece of string and let's put it around a rhombus and our square.
There you go. Rhombus square. Remember the square has to have four right angles. The right angle measures 90 degrees. You have to have four right angles. This has four right angles. We're just going to leave that there. So our rhombus, no, let me show you the label. The rhombus has four equal sides. Rhombus has four equal sides. That means that this could be a rhombus too, because it has four equal sides. Hmm. Can this be a rhombus? No, it cannot. What is it? Let's put a circle around it and the square. So we're creating now almost like a Venn diagram. Okay, let's see if I can get this in here. This is always a little bit tricky. And kids, don't try this at home. I am a trained professional. I'm kidding. I am a trained professional, but you can try this at home. Anyways, we've got our rectangle over here. What do we know about our rectangle? It has the same characteristic as this shape here in that it has four right angles. So our rectangle has four right angles. We know what this shape is called. It's a square. Our square also has four right angles. So a square can be a rectangle. But, can a rectangle be a square? Hmm. A rhombus. I'm sorry, a square can be a rhombus. But, can a rhombus be a square? You got to think about what's different here. Our square has four equal sides, just like a rhombus, but our square has four right angles. Our square also has two sets of parallel sides. So a square can be a parallelogram, but a parallelogram cannot be a square. A rhombus can be a parallelogram, but a parallelogram cannot be a rhombus. A parallelogram can be a trapezoid, but a trapezoid can't be a parallelogram. A square can be a trapezoid, but a trapezoid cannot be a square. So for all you students that are doing this at home in your modules, again, this lesson was requested by my friend Paige for her students, and this works pretty well with a lot of the students in the other classes that are also doing this math module too. But think about this lesson, go back and review this lesson while you're looking at your module pages. And if you want, maybe you can write me down some answers as to why a rectangle can be a parallelogram, but a parallelogram can't be a rectangle. If you can think of some relationships and some why and why nots, I would love to read about them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.